Podcast, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. And it is a Monday morning, and the boys from GCES are here. Information presented on this program is believed to be factual and up-to-date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Encompass More Asset Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. And the boys are here. Galen Bergerstock, Clinton Smith with us this morning. Here we go, guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? It's good to have both of you with us here today as we talk about retirement and retirement savings. Um, boy, there's a call coming in right now. Galen, I'm going to ask you this question first while I take this call, see if it's for you or not. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the question I wanted to ask was, how do people come up with setting a budget for their retirement years? I know that's a big question. We've covered portions of it before, but yeah. uh, and I know you've talked about goals before. What about the, the call, by the way, hung up? Well, I, I mean, you know, thinking about setting up a budget, I mean, you kind of already know your budget. So you just have to sit down with yourself, a pen and piece of paper, something electronic, whatever, and just figure out what you're spending your money on monthly. Where Where's all your money going to? Mortgage, rent, car payment, insurance lines, utilities, um, any kind of extras you want to do. And just figure out a nice monthly budget. Do a couple months because sometimes you're going to have quarterly bills or something like that and, and get get a little bit of a picture and a scenario of how much money you're spending I, th- I think that's the first step yeah clinton i know that a lot of folks when they're considering retirement years uh they're thinking to themselves i'm gonna have to cut here or cut there uh and and i really like doing that stuff so i'm gonna hold off on retirement because uh, i i want to spend that money yeah i mean most people probably already have somewhat of a budget probably made uh, you know, my mother did it growing up. She would write down all the bills that she spent every month and put it in a folder. I use an Excel file to keep track, make sure that I'm paying every, all of my bills every month. So a lot of people already really ha- probably have a budget, yeah. but whenever Galen sits down with you, um, we do a holistic review. So Galen's going to review all of those things with you and go over the budget with you and help you create it. And that's really, <clears throat> excuse me, that's really how people can compare what they're going to make in retirement versus what they're making now. Cause he'll sit down and figure out how much you're going to make less or how much more you're going to make to retire and then compare that to what you're spending now. And that's really where you can see if you're even going to have to make cuts. Cause sometimes mm-hmm. people retire and end up making more money than they are while they're working. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to guess that there are some people that come in to visit with you for the first time and they've never done anything like that. They've never actually yeah. sat down and come up with an actual budget this is what I'm doing monthly. This is what I need to do monthly. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's very common that you don't actually have it down on paper. But realistically, you know what your annual salary is and you know the parameters of which how you can spend money in a month. So you don't know that you know the information already, but you really do. You know, and, and sometimes when people are caught off guard and you're like, oh, I have to put this on a credit card. Well, that's because you don't have enough money monthly to take care of it. Mm-hmm. So you're putting that on a card. So you're kind of aware of how much, you know, you're building up in credit card debt as well. And there are those fixed things like I, I know taxes are going to come at this time and, and property tax is going to come twice a year. And yep. uh, and, and those things uh, that you have to prepare for, as, as I think Clinton just said a couple of moments ago, you know, people... They have things coming that they know are going to be on the on the future agenda, and, and those have to be taken care of. Yeah, I mean, it's just like an electric bill, electric or gas. Some people will do just pay for it monthly. Some people will go on the budget plan so they know, you know, an average of how much they're paying. You know, you just have to find your sweet spot in retirement and, and, and go from there. Some people have dreams. Everybody has dreams. Mm-hmm. But some people have dreams that, uh, you know, just like in the old days when mom and dad and Uncle Bill did it, uh, I'm going to buy a place down in South Carolina or or Florida, and and that's where I'm going to spend half my year, and I'm going to spend half a year back here. Yeah, yeah. realistic these days. If in Florida, definitely. I mean, uh, a lot of people do it in Florida just for the tax advantages. Today's tax day, so I figure like we should at least make mention to it of somehow. 
Uh, but a lot of people will homestead in Florida, spend six months the, the, the out of the year there, and then not have to pay state taxes in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. which can, for some people can be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I would guess. Well, uh, I have yeah. a trend that just doesn't – I think it's called a halfback where people are going to Myrtle Beach or someplace like that, not even going the whole way to Florida to take advantage of the tax situation, but just to get a little bit warmer. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and there are people who do that, but are there specific retirement things, uh, considerations that need to be made when you're buying a property elsewhere and you're spending half a year here, half a year there? Yeah, I mean, is it more appropriate? A lot of people ask me, should I pay off my house? Should I buy another house? You know, it, <clears throat> it's really up to you if you want to own versus rent. You know, uh, from what I see and and what I've seen. Most people that are making that type of move, it is a permanent move, and they know what they're doing, and they're going to address everything as if it was, you know, a purchase of someplace local. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, you know, people think it's a nice idea, move for a little bit, and then come back. So if you're buying a property down there, it's going to be a little bit harder to move that property versus to rent, get your feet wet for a year, see if it's something you like. Yeah, Yeah. I know a lot of people buy the big camper, and then they just rent a spot for a few months in the wintertime and then come back up here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There's tons of options. And, and again, that stuff, whenever Galen sits out with people, he goes over all of that. You know, we even work with people where, you know, we wrote an annuity for them five years ago and they're calling to find out, hey, what's the best way for me to get 15 grand for me to put down on a house or for, for me to do this, for me to do that? Mm-hmm. And Galen usually will help them. Not usually. He always helps them go through and figure out the best place to take it with the least impact of surrender fees or anything like that. You know, it's interesting you say that because um, I was hearing last week, um, and I don't even know the format under which I was hearing it, somebody talking about the reverse mortgage and uh, how that's, uh, and in, in this person's view, an, an evil thing. And I don't know if it's, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm sure that it uh, depends upon the circumstances of the people involved. Yeah. But, but reverse mortgage has become a term that people are hearing now, and, uh, and and is that an option for somebody, and, and should it be something that they consider or not? It, it comes into where I say that every there's a product available for everybody in a the situation they're in. So while that might not be something that I would say I specialize in a reverse mortgage, by no means, but it probably fits. You know, if you're single with no children and you aren't don't have anybody to leave your house to, you know, there's always a situation where it might come into play. I look at them as uh, not a good thing. It seems like it would be more of preying on the people that did not prepare for their retirement and they have no other choices available to them. And it's usually because they have health issues or they need to go into a nursing home or they need income and they didn't prepare for retirement beforehand. And it's the last thing that they have. Uh, and so then it's just basically them selling their house while they're still living in it mm-hmm. to use the money and the equity in the house. And then after you use that, if you're still living, what are you going to do then? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, but you know, Clinton, you keep bringing up good topics for me to, uh, to toss out back at you. Uh, (laughs) so let me toss that one back at you. Uh, somebody who is, um, preparing to move into a personal care home of some sort, whether it's, uh, assisted living, uh, or something a little bit more, uh, they have more needs than just assisted living. Uh, and, and so they make those plans in their retirement years and they, uh, end up uh, saying to themselves, well, gosh, I lived all these years in my house and I, I saved up as much money as I could, and now I'm just paying it to somebody to take care of me in my final years, and, and they, again, they get a little bit bitter about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's a completely horrible scenario whenever you get to that point where you need to think about something like that. Um, you know, just personally and generally, I think leaving my home would be horrible. You know, I, I would not want to do that at all. Um, but it, it's one of those things where can you afford the maintenance on it? And is it someplace that you can even live because you can't get up the stairs? Yeah. And when we're talking about planning for retirement, then those those are considerations oh, that yeah. we have to make. Yeah. Yeah. Am I going to have to make modifications to my home in order to retire? If I, you know, as, yeah. as it gets yeah. harder and harder to get around, uh, things <clears throat> of that nature. Uh, and is it a valuable thing to stay where I'm staying right now? Do I yeah. need to, in the property term, is downsize? Do I need to downsize? That all comes into the financial plan for your retirement years, does it not? Yeah, It does. And a lot of people are prepared. You know, it, it, you have this big house while you're younger and you have children. And then you still have this house because you have all these memories. But 
do you need three bedrooms for two people or four bedrooms for two people? So downsizing might naturally need to come into the plan. Um, the long-term care scenario, that's a little bit extra and special, but you know, a lot of people are prepared to leave their home just because of the size of it. Mm-hmm. So for people that have prepared for retirement and have sat down with a financial advisor, there are things that you can put in place to help lessen the effects of having to go into a nursing mm-hmm. home. Um, we talk a lot about adding on to your annuity a rider that involves long-term care. That way you're not going out and spending for something that may be a what if. You know, we don't sell a lot of long-term care just because it's giving them a what if where they're paying more money out of their pocket, not knowing that they're ever going to use it. But the annuity, they're already going to get the annuity to add a long-term care rider inside of their annuity policy. Mm-hmm. We see, we think is a lot more cost effective because it's not really bringing money directly out of your pocket every month. It kind of comes out inside of the policy, but then you also have that protection should you need it yeah. later on down the road. Yeah. And as Galen, you're, you, you often say uh, it's, it's all about, Making sure that as the road gets shorter, mm-hmm. um, I, I have plenty of money to get to the end of the line, uh, and and I, I'm not at the end of my of my life here on this earth, uh, scraping and clawing for every penny. Uh, that's what retirement planning is all about. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Like Clinton was saying about annuities, I also like the life insurance vessel to put it on as a rider. So it's it's just the standalone long term care policies that I don't do a lot of. I like building them in other things so you have the protection if you need it because you don't know all right so all of this being the case as we talk with our friends from gces this morning uh they they just point to the need for folks uh, especially since we don't have this kind of expertise clinton yeah uh to to really sit down and and with somebody who who knows his stuff uh and figure things out uh, what what is my path forward yeah it's not me they're going to sit down with i'm just the pretty face They'll sit down with Galen, uh, and he'll go over every, literally, we go over all of that stuff. We can answer everyone's questions and get people back on the right track in about an hour, hour and a half at the most. Yeah. Super easy. That's pretty amazing, really, yeah. when you get right down to it. Uh, you can map it out for them that quickly, but, 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 but which isn't to say that uh, you're, you're just going to zip right through it. You're, you're going to take due diligence, figure out, you know, what is the correct way to move forward from here. Yeah. Procrastination is the biggest downfall of retirement planning. Yeah. 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 Well, just like taxes. Yeah. Just like a, what did I say this morning? 49% yeah. of people, 47 or 49% of people wait until today to start on their taxes. Yeah. That hey. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They don't have Wendy and Jim from CGN CPA blowing up their phone all the time. <laughs> All right, well, gentlemen, uh, we appreciate you coming in to visit with us today. Folks want to get involved with GCES, what should they do? You can stop by our office, 1780 Philadelphia Street. You can visit us online at gces.us or just give us a call and set up an appointment. It's super easy, 724-915-0000. Beautiful. Guys, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS, 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and wccsradio.com. It's spring. Hi, everybody. This is Bill Otto from the Oldies Attic. Join me Saturday mornings between 9 and 